Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the used sailboat market breakdown. Now, today we are moving up in price once again, and we are all the way up already to $100,000. That's an absolutely huge budget, in my personal opinion, for a used sailboat. And there are a lot of things to consider at this price point. One of the first things you should be considering is single versus dual helm. At first, novice sailors, as well as seasoned salts, often looked at dual helms as more of a gimmick. Gone now are the days where they were laughed at in marinas and anchorages. They are a relatively new feature introduced over the last couple of decades into the world of quote-unquote retail sailboats. Before this introduction, they were only seen on high-end racing boats competing in events such as the Vindy Globe. If you have never had the chance to sail one of these, I can assure you, after you do, you will quickly be sold as they are far superior in every way to single aft helm vessels. Modern boats, now those made in the last couple of decades, are very wide, also known in the world of sailing as beamy. Gone are the days of large canoe sterns, overhangs, and bow spirits. In today's sailing vessels, the length of the waterline is almost the exact same as the length overall. Now 30 years ago, this was not the case, and often you would see a huge disparity in the length at waterline versus the length overall. On larger vessels in the 45 and up range, it was very common to see a difference of 10 feet or more. You may have bought a 50-foot vessel when referring to length overall. However, the length at the waterline was only 37 feet. Older vessels were also much narrower, so a single helm was not nearly as problematic as it is on these new, incredibly beamy boats. The new Beneteau Oceanus 46, for instance, is nearly 15 feet wide in the rear end, and a single wheel in the center would simply not work, as it would have to be far too large in order to get far enough port or starboard to see forward properly. In addition to that, a single wheel impedes fore and aft movement through the cockpit. It basically acts as a giant roadblock consistently in the way. Now you can actually see this live and in person on numerous YouTube sailing channels with their vessel where simply moving around the single helm is clearly a giant pain in the behind. This is very evident when looking at the size wheel needed on a single helm sailboat in order to have a good vantage point on either side of the vessel when healing. Hence the foldable large wheels that are found on several older models as shown here. Twin wheels, also known as dual helms, solve several problems and on a cruising boat they are an absolutely terrific advancement. First, you can sit at almost the whole edge on either side for a clear view ahead while sailing or docking. As any sailor knows, docking is far more nerve-wracking than almost any open water sailing, especially when attempting to dock in crowded marinas full of weekend credit card captains who routinely have no idea what the basic right-of-way rules are when on the water. Between the two helm stations, you can find a comfortable place to sit or stand in virtually any condition, and they also offer an additional huge entertaining area for family and friends. It is very easy to have someone grab the other wheel while you attend to a sheet or other task. Movement through the cockpit as well as heading down below is much, much easier on dual helm vessels. This is actually a very important safety feature as having the ability to quickly rush on deck and get behind the wheel can be the difference between running aground and having an enjoyable sailing adventure. The newer hull designs offer a much wider aft part of the boat, and this makes for a substantially more room in the area of the boat that gets the most use, the cockpit. Longer bench seats on either side for lying down or taking a nap, room for an actual useful cockpit table on centerline versus the silliness that is often seen as passing for a cockpit table. More helm seating positions and overall a much better enjoyable and comfortable cockpit area. That in turn, in reality, just makes for a much more enjoyable sailing adventure. While sailing and while underway, where are you? You're in the cockpit. Where would you like to be the most comfortable? Behind the helm, in the cockpit, while sailing. With dual helms, once you add an arch, and everyone should do this, while some consider them visually obtrusive at first, once the inevitable canvas has been added, dodger and bimini, you no longer notice it. The arch serves several practical purposes. First, the mainsail sheets to the arch, keeping the main sheet out of the cockpit, which is especially helpful during a jive. There is no traveler in the cockpit to get in the way or on deck to interfere with the dodger placement. The main sheet is sheeted further aft on the boom than in some other solutions for greater mechanical advantages. The arch prevents the boom also from dropping into the cockpit, which again is an additional safety feature. With the addition of an arch, you can also add several stainless steel handholds on them to ease moving in or out of the cockpit to the side deck. 
Given that almost all cruising boats get canvas these days, the arch makes a solid attachment point for dodgers and bimini connectors as well as stiffens them considerably versus the SS tubing bows seen on most older vessels. Once you do add an enclosed bimini attached to an arch, you have now added a huge additional amount of living and entertaining space for all weather conditions, as well as protecting yourself from inclement weather while at anchor and still being able to entertain on deck. When full-time cruising, an arch is an almost absolute must-have for several reasons, and adding these large arches on narrow, single-helm vessels in turn often creates what I like to call a jungle gem effect making it a constant task to accomplish almost anything at the rear of the vessel. With the wheels set down low, the center of gravity is also lower, stability is greater, and windage is reduced. Beyond that, aft wheels tend to offer better feedback and a faster response time, especially when sailing hard on the wind, with some sailors claiming they feel more at one with the boat from a position that's closer to the water. On a more objective level, it's just much easier and far more efficient to have a dual helm for every aspect of sailing. Anything less would be uncivilized. Bonus points if you can tell me what movie that little quote came from. With dual helms, you also generally get the advantage of a swim platform. These keep getting better and better, larger and larger, and easier than ever to use. For example, the transom platforms on the Oceanus 35, 38, and 41 are almost the whole width of the boat and when lowered are close to the water for easy access when swimming or boarding a dinghy. It's just one single step from the cockpit to the swim platform. In turn, this makes everything easier, getting on and off the boat in both marinas and at anchor, as mentioned earlier, entering and exiting your dinghy, loading and unloading supplies, I sail and live here full-time in the Caribbean, so access into and out of the water with ease is an absolute must for me. All of my time is spent in the cockpit area of my vessel, and for me personally, I would never own another single helm vessel, as they simply do not meet my personal needs. My needs, however, may be different than yours, so always keep your personal needs and goals at the forefront of any advice you hear. Besides my personal needs, I see zero advantage of a single helm, and in my opinion, if in the market for a new-to-you sailboat, dual helm would be my only choice. Dual helms are now available on vessels as small as 35 feet, so no longer is the need to purchase a 50-foot yacht to get a dual helm set up necessary. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Dual helm versus single helm, and as we're going up in price here, you're going to see me harp on that often. Today, I'm also going to pull out the old spreadsheet and kind of give you some examples on the spreadsheet as how you can kind of compare these boats, because it's very, very important to understand exactly what you're getting, what the equipment on your vessel is actually worth to, in order to kind of determine your offer price. You don't want to offer a bunch of money for a boat. It's not worth it just because it's listed out. It's got a whole bunch of accessories or something. More often than not, those accessories aren't worth anything. And here we are, ladies and gents. We're over on Yacht World. I feel like we have been here before. Now, very, very basic criteria. We're going for the United States and $100,000 and up because I covered everything from, I think, $5,000 to $100,000 last few days. And we've got our first gem, the 1938. Just kidding. But look at this. I got to show you this. This is outrageous. This guy wants hundred grand for a pile of wood. That's all this is. Pile of wood. Someone would be better off donating this boat to a, I don't know, some sort of a sailing club or something or a sailing school. Uh, get yourself the tax right off and let them and the kids refinish a boat like that. No one's buying that boat for a hundred grand. I appreciate the enthusiasm with the uh, sale, but it ain't happening. Now, our first actual culprit is the 2000 Beneteau 50. Now, again, our problem here is our age range. It's 2000, so the vessel's 23 years old. By now, you should all know, what are we going to look for vessels older than 20 years? We got to look for some things that have been done to the vessel to make sure we don't step right into an absolute train wreck of a refit. So far, this looks like a light at the end of the tunnel, and the light is actually a train, and it's about to wreck right into our face because this boat looks like trash. It's sitting on the hard, rudder's all scuffed up. I mean, here we go with the dark interior. Again, I appreciate it. It's very, very elegant. It's pretty. 
but long term it leads to depression on sailboats. Living on a sailboat is hard enough and the last thing you want is a very dark and dreary interior. It's gonna wear on your nerves. You're gonna start talking to clouds. Ask me how I know. So here we are. Stock photos. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yachts, New England, you trash can. Um, so here we go. We got the three cabin. That's it's the four cabin. Thanks for showing me two. Might even be the five cabin. Who knows? This boat's a trash can. Don't buy this. Wow. Nice. Uh, you know, if you're backing into a slip, it's a good idea to throw fenders here. Then you won't hit the cement wall. Just saying. Uh, or just hit it and destroy your transom. Whatever. You know, whatever makes you happy in life. But this isn't a boat. Ooh, look at that. That's probably... What is that? There's a line there. That might be a crack underlying... The, underneath the gel coat. I don't know. We're not going for this. This thing's been hammered on the back. Uh, and this picture looks wildly different than the previous... Than the early picture. Uh, where is it at? Let's go. Than this one. Either your white balance is off in your camera. This looks completely a different color blue. Or that's an old photo. One's a new photo. Something funny's going on here. Might be your white balance because this photo looks like trash. Uh, jeez, what a mess. And right here. So this is bad because you lift this up and your engine's underneath there. So if this has what looks like a bunch of mold and probably water intrusion, my guess is it went down into the engine. And that's not uh, something we're ever looking for. The guy put no effort into this anything on this wow what an absolute dumpster i mean you couldn't you couldn't give this boat away just about she's looking rough real rough the gardening in the cockpit that's a new concept uh similar to homesteading van life now we're gardening in the cockpit so yeah this boat's clearly a dumpster but i'll show you uh you know, the nitty gritty, just because we go over to sailboat data for that. Boom. She's a Beneteau 50, not an Oceanus 50. If you pull up Beneteau Oceanus 50, you're going to get the newer model built 2010, not the one built in 2005 or 1995. So again, with these older vessels, we run into this big discrepancy, length of the waterline versus length overall. Length of waterline, think of that as your livable space combined with your beam, right? So we got, you know, a five foot discrepancy here. We're just over five feet, so it's not terrible, but you've broken that 50 foot mark. Now, remember what I talked about in yesterday's video? There's breaking points when it comes to uh, running costs and slips. 40 foot is one and 50 foot is one. So it's 30 foot. Now, once you break that, you get charged an even higher premium for length overall. And in marinas, you get charged by the foot. So you're not just getting charged an additional amount for that extra 0.75 feet. For the whole 50.75 feet, you're being charged a higher price. Sometimes 50 and under in a marina, it can be, let's say five bucks a foot. And then sometimes once you break that 50 foot mark, it might be 12 bucks a foot for the whole thing. So that's a huge difference in your cost there. So that's kind of a bummer on this one. Keep that in mind, but that boat's uh, an absolute dump truck. Now, we're not going for old boats, not at this price. This is far too much money to be spending for a 1986 anything. Uh, same, in 1971, no can do. That's a Nader Swan. Again, you can sometimes find these where someone spent a bunch of money. This looks gorgeous. It's very, very pretty. Usability is not really there. Wildly cluttered deck. Um, you know, just a different design and Someone spent a bunch of money because this looks really, really pretty. But we're not going to step into a boat from 1971 that's really not laid out that user friendly. And a running cost over time is going to be much, much higher on an older vessel simply because everything on a used sailboat has a lifespan. Now, the Catalina 350, a 2003. So we're right at that 20 year mark. So we have to instantly look down here and try to see. Did anyone give us any information? Has any big refit work been done on the vessel? Um, a new, v hey, they got the new VHF radio. We're gonna have to take a look at the picture. 2016 cockpit cushions. Again, it's 2023. So, I mean, seven years ago. 
So seven, six, seven years ago, I got some things done. I'm not seeing anything here that would lead me to go further on this boat. She's a single helm. She's looking rough right there. It's a Catalina. They're normally higher priced comparatively to things that you would find. Um, it's just not what we're going for. At this kind of a price point, you really want a boat that is turnkey ready to go. And you don't want to have, is that an air conditioner in the sink? That's a, uh, it's interesting. Um, but I mean, Catalinas are pretty, and sometimes they're laid out really, really well. My big issue is the price point and the other comparables on the market as far as what you can get for a used sailboat. You're missing something here, sir. You've taken something out and you didn't replace it for the sail photo. That's just stupid, man. Pier 1 Yacht Sales. Ugh, these guys, they're always doing dumb sh... That looks... Nice. Classy. Uh, cockpit locker. Or I mean, uh, anchor locker. Looking fairly clean. Not looking terrible. Um, you know, that's somewhat of an indicator. But nothing else here leads me to believe that they've really put any time or effort into a refit. Now we have another... You see how quick we jumped up in price? From 100 right to 105. Things start moving here as we go higher, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. Tinta... Well, I can't pronounce that. Uh, this would be much cooler if this was a hard top, a stepped hard top. I would have just raised this here underneath the boom. I'd pull that up. I'd just make this one nice hard top dodger. That's what everybody should do. But uh, they're expensive, so I do get it. Walk through transom, swim platform. That's always a bonus. She is the single helm. And again, this price, I'm going for dual helms. Now, if she was in the Caribbean or something, that dinghy's not worth you paying a bunch of money extra for uh neither is the outboard because we're going for a 15 horsepower these wrapping the helm things with rope i don't like but they did do a nice panel here so someone's actually replaced the gauges they've cleaned things up things are looking pretty good here so it looks like anchor locker is looking great that's kind of what we're after again nice new gauges engine compartment very very clean you can always check the motor mounts if they give you good pictures right here so we're looking for a non-rusty motor mount. Don't want the bolts and nuts and things all trashed. The belts you want in fairly good condition. You don't want to see a bunch of rust around here on the engine. You want someone that kept their engine compartment very, very clean. This person seems to have done the job. That's a terrible photo. You shouldn't have that on there. So is this one. You know, that's a nice photo. There we go. We got a nice wide angle. You went with a stainless steel microwave. Hats off to you. At least you replaced it. You got yourself a toaster. I think that's a teapot or a coffee pot. Um, there's an alarm going off outside, so hopefully you can't hear that. The double sink. I hate double sinks. We've discussed that. Just a personal preference. Like the little phone holder here. It's actually a cup holder, but hey, it fits his phone. That's cool. So the, I love, you know, I love these. This table actually folds up and out of the way. Awesome. I like the dual captain's chairs. I'm a big, big fan. Uh, glass. You don't want on your vessel these maybe these are plastic they should be plastic you don't really want glass see there's the table it moves up and out of the way how cool is that great job catalina great job so even though i don't like catalina i can give them props where props are due and so far this boat looks amazing uh now again it's not at all what i'd be going for because it's just you know in this price range i personally want a dual helm but she looks good she looks really really clean let's see so we're at that 20 year marks let's see if anybody's done anything so we got batteries 2020 awesome inverter 2020 led don't care 400 watts in 2010 that adds you nothing to the value of your vessel bimini 2018 okay barbecue neither here nor there yeah 9.9 .9. why everybody going for 9.9s they're trash so i'm not seeing anything here as far as standing rigging, running rigging, engine overhaul, things like that, then they're not giving me any information right there. So we're going to pop on over to uh, our favorite website, ladies and gents, going right over to sailboat data. We're going to take a look at the size of the vessel. And here we are, sailboat data. Nice little two cabin version. This isn't bad. We got 31.3, 35.4. So we got a four foot difference roughly in length of waterline versus length overall. That's not bad at all. Nice 13 foot beam. Good. We're doing good. 30 horsepower, 40 gallons of fuel. Not bad for the size vessel. 88 gallons of water. Nice. 
cap size screening for you. Again, this doesn't mean anything. These two numbers mean absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Um, for me personally, I find the higher the comfort ratio number, the less comfortable the boat is underway. But that's just me. So this Catalina, not bad, but there's things to definitely consider when it comes to uh, this price range because there are some other benefits and features you can get at that same price point to compare to. So maybe that's one for your spreadsheet if you're a fan of Catalina and you like that boat. She looks really, really clean, very, very pretty on the inside of the vessel as well as the exterior of the vessel. Now we got the 36 MK2 Catalina again. So we're gonna probably run into the same thing. Let's see how this one was taken care of. Looking okay. I mean, nothing. You know, the other boat looks in better shape, but this guy redid his gauges as well. And that looks clean. Catalina owners, a lot of times, especially when you get into this price point, they take fairly good care of them, generally speaking. Um, but then they just want too much money for them. So your standard Catalina 36 MK2, I've covered these a bunch. Again, we're at the 20 year mark. So right here in description and other details, we're always looking to see what kind of a refit they did, if they did anything. 2017, 2013, 2018, nothing. So new holding tank, 2021. That's it. Your battery is 17. <laughs> yeah. Where's my standing rigging, my running rigging, my engine rebuild? Not seeing it. It's kind of a mishmash of stuff done at different points. Standing rigging. There we go. So is that, so you could call. Is it new? Is it replaced? Is it just inspected? What's happening here? 2016, did you know, that's old. 2017 main sale, that's old. Uh, five, six years on a sale. Typical lifespan, seven to 10, depending on sailing conditions and where you're sailing at. Now I covered that one before in the sailboat data in yesterday's video, uh, but I'll do it again here just to kind of show you really quick. Here we are, sailboat data, bam. There's our first no-go. At this price range, I really, really want to see you guys get your length of waterline versus length overall as close together as possible. So you got a small beam for a boat that big. Um, and this six foot discrepancy here, we're just not, we're not buying it. We're not picking up what you're putting down. Now another Catalina 350, again, you're going to start to see a whole bunch of the same makes and models. We're going to bump into about 10 or 15 makes and models. It's going to, for the most part, just be the same boats same boat models kind of over and over hunter passage 42 that's too much money for this old of a vessel again you can pull it up if you happen to be in love with this vessel for some reason maybe you've seen one maybe you've sailed on one maybe you've been on one now, this is a center cockpit we don't do center cockpits in my humble opinion because where you're going to spend most of your time is right here and you don't want it to be this small and cramped now that is especially true if you're someone that's really looking to go the distance when it comes to sailing, because when you're sailing, very rarely will most people be down in the cabins or down below in the salon. They're going to be up here. The reason for that, a lot of people get seasick. I've never been seasick in my life, but it looks miserable. And if you go down below, you're going to get even more sick. Uh, new eyes and glass, new canvas. Awesome. Little cover there. You know, this boat's just old, but look at how big it is. I mean, the Hunters just did such a good job uh, at that. And this one's looking like a two cabin, which is awesome. So she's going to be a huge boat, but she's a center cockpit. So it's not going to make any sense. And she's a 95 and it's 105 grand, man. Then they told me no info there. Standard operating procedure for the worst brokers on the planet. Uh, so we did do some stuff. A six horsepower Yanmar or Yamaha. Puh, okay. Um, so we've done some stuff here, but again, center cockpits, they don't make any sense unless, now if you live somewhere cold, so you live uh, up in the Pacific Northwest or way up in the Northeast coast of the United States and you want to get a boat to lower your month to month living cost and all you're going to really do is just live on the boat, this boat could be fantastic because that interior is going to be absolutely huge. She's a center cockpit, she'll get you where you want to go, not going to be the most comfortable especially on long distances, but she can get the job done. Now, a 1988 Hunter Legend, you're absolutely on drugs. Nobody's buying that. Not for that money. Not happening. Um, 
And then we get into these older ones again, especially when you hit this price point, these older well-known makes and models, someone's dumped a bunch of money into them, but that doesn't mean that you won't have to as well. So keep that in mind. And we got a Cycleads 43.3. The Cycleads, I mispronounce every time. So yell at me in the comments. I don't really care. Um, this is the same boat, if I remember correctly, that uh, Sailing the Vagabond first had. I think it was the Cycleads 43.3. I'm, I'm almost positive. Um, this boat is always 100 grand. It has been for 10 years, and it will probably continue to be for another six. Um, so this is just a very clean, basic example of the Cycleads 43.3. Looks nice, looks clean. Scroll on down here. Uh, and we've got the dual helm. So now we can start comparing to other vessels. Now we know we can get dual helm for the same price as the other single helms. So what's gonna make more sense for us? So we pulled this up on um, good old sailboat data here. Here we are, the Cycleads. Okay, so this is awesome. We have a 40.65 length at the waterline and a 43.5 length overall. Ladies and gentlemen, we've gotten it down to under two feet. We've got a 14 and a half foot beam. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to livable space on board, we are shaking and baking. We're cooking with gas right here. Because look at that. I mean, it's phenomenal. 53 gallons of fuel, 140 gallon water tank. Awesome. Probably don't need a water maker with that much. Um, cruising. We're going capsize doesn't mean anything keep that in mind comfort ratio want want don't mean nothing so if we compare the 43.3 right here remember we looked at the beneteau 50 right here just a little while ago okay we have this giant discrepancy here we got a 45.42 14.67 beam we got a 42.5 so we lose three feet or no we got a 40.65 there at the length of the waterline so we're losing about five feet length of the waterline, you know, on this one compared to the 50. But our beam stays right about the same. So we lose some space, little space as far as your length of the waterline on the cyclades over the 50. But remember, this 50 is a dumpster. So there's my cyclades. So the cyclades, I mean, this is a great boat. These things can take you all over the world. And for 105 grand, and it's in New York. That's, I mean, so far that one's a winner. Now, I want to kind of show you guys something really quick, if I can. So here's my little spreadsheet right here, right? Now, I'm going to kind of do this with you uh, to make things easy, okay? So boom, we're going to move this over. Bingo. Now I got the cyclies, right? We're going to pull this up. Bam. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the listing. I'm going to grab our spreadsheet right here in vessel hyperlink. I would just put the listing right there. Okay. But I would hyperlink it, right? Bam. Boom. So now I've got my listing right on my spreadsheet. Okay. And this boat's a cycle. So we're going to go ahead and change the name here. I spelled that wrong. I don't really care. We're just going to call it Cycleads 43.3. Bingo. Okay. Bam. We're moving right along. 105 grand. Okay. Taxes also in. Included. So our price right here, boom, 105 grand, 105, one, two, three, bingo, bango, bongo. I think she's a 2006. I hope so. Double check. 2006. Bam. So we got 2006. She's located in New York. New York. Song for that. Now we can do the length of overall length of the waterline and the beam. Now I'm not going to do that because we're just cruising on the video here. But so what you would do on the spreadsheet is you go ahead and you add everything else here, right? So although actually we'll just we'll walk through it. Okay, so we're walking through it. So I got it up here on sailboat data. I'm gonna fill it out on the other screen. So I got a length at the waterline right here. And what are we doing? We got 40.65 feet. So 40.65, I'm putting on the spreadsheet right now. Now I've also got a beam. Where's our beam at? 14.53, 14.53 beam. Doing it on the spreadsheet as I'm talking. And our length overall is 43.5, 43.5. Boom. We're shaking, we're baking. What was this vessel? This was a, uh, how many cabins? Anybody remember? Because I don't, but we're going to check it out. Uh, and look at this. Bam. She's had a whole bunch of stuff done and it's recent. 
So new bottom paint, new cutlass bearing, new fridge. These are 2017, so not new, but for those types of items, it's not old. Uh, transducer, chart plotter, autopilot, standing rigging. Boom. That's what we were looking for. Lazy, stack pack and lazy jacks, new mainsail, 2017, a little bit old on that. So here we are. We are looking fantastic so far. Um, we are cruising two heads. Doesn't tell me any. It's got to be a three cabin, right? Has to be. Let's check it out. Let's go ahead and book on into the interior. Boom. Yeah, it's, it has to be a three cabin. It's a three cabin. Okay. So we got a three cabin. We're going to put that on there. Now we're going to go back over to our sailboat data. Now I know this is probably not super exciting for you guys, but this is how you should be looking for a boat. Now I've got 53 gallons of fuel. So I'm going to put that on my spreadsheet as well as I'm talking to you. So 53 gallons, boom, over on the spreadsheet. And we got 140 gallons of water. Okay. Here we go. 140 gallons of water. Bam. Boom. Okay. That's on the spreadsheet. Now, this is what our spreadsheet starts to look like. Okay. Got a cycle. It's 43.4. I got the vessel hyperlinked right in here. Bam. There's my listing. No need to go back to Yacht World. Start going crazy trying to figure out where was that boat I thought was so great. 2006. Currently located in New York. Length of overall. Length of waterline. I got my beam. I got my cabins. I got my fuel. I got my water. And bam, right here is where I would put in the information to call these guys. Awesome. Sounds great, right? Now, as we go down, you'll see it auto populates right here. Boom. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of sales. Now, the sales, the guy just replaced them. So I don't need those right away. Standing rigging just replaced them. I don't need them. Anchor. He also just replaced it. The running rigging, we're going to call. We're going to find out. I don't remember if there's a bottom job on there, dinghy and an engine. So let's say just for the purpose of showing you this spreadsheet, let's say it needs a new engine. Keep in mind, it doesn't, right? Let's say I got 10 grand on a new engine, okay? $10,000 on a new engine. Auto populates right there. Now remember, the price of the vessel is 105K as seen right here. Let's say it needed a new engine, okay? I scroll on down. Let's say it needs new batteries here as well for 3K, okay? We're moving, boom. Now all of a sudden, it auto populates right down here. The cycle is 43.3. It's no longer a $105,000 vessel. It's $118,000. And then on the spreadsheet, you can also add your state tax. Now, this one happens to be tax paid, import tax, registration, airfare if you need to go to the vessel, lodging. Do you need a captain to get the vessel back home? How much is your insurance? Miscellaneous costs. You can also go through and does it need autopilot, water maker, generator, inverter, solar, batteries, AIS, wind vane, bow thruster, radar, anchors, all those things you need to be looking at when you're thinking of buying yourself a used sailboat. That's why this spreadsheet is so priceless. Now I've got it set up right here to compare about nine vessels. Anything more than that's absurd and you should be able to narrow it down much, much to much fewer vessels there. So you can go through here and you can add all kinds of stuff. Spreadsheets available right on my website. It's only 10 bucks. You get the spreadsheet and my number one best selling how to buy yourself a used sailboat book. Now, you didn't know. Yes, I'm a number one best selling sailing on author. Oh, fancy me. Wah, wah. Nobody cares. But you do get the book and the spreadsheet. It's only 10 bucks. Come on, go buy the spreadsheet. Um, all right, so we're moving. So this cycle is looking like a million bucks right now so far because in a lot of it, is because of all the stuff that they've done. Now remember, you know, we got all this stuff, that's just standard, but here's what we're looking for. And they got the dates of everything. And this is all what you'd expect for a refit at 20 years old. You'd need a bottom job. You need a cutlass bearing, probably your refrigerator, AC, something's gonna be going. So that's gonna probably be on that refit thing. Anchor by that time, you've probably lost one, got a cheap one, who knows, but this one's got a good one. He's got a second anchor as well. He's also got a brand new Mantis. This is a 4,700 bucks for this anchor, I think. Um, you know, and that's a Mantis anchor. There's nothing wrong with it. It's basically brand new at this point. And he's got 120 feet of chain. That's a little bit light on the chain. Um, and Road Road. I assume you mean Rope Road, but Road Road. Cool. We'll go with it. New Transducer. Chart Plotter. Autopilot. Remember, those are all things on my spreadsheet. Uh, new Standing Rigging. Uh, new Stack Pack. Yeah. I mean, new Main Sail. Yeah. Dude, we're this turnkey ready to go, ladies and gents. Exactly what I said at the beginning of the video. For this price point, this is 100% what we're after. We have a very nice dual helm vessel already gone through the repit. She's refit, and she's under 20 years old. 
So we shouldn't have to do anything really to this boat except for any kind of upgrades that we personally want on the vessel in the next several years. 105k cruising for a bruising. We're 100% ready to go turnkey rocking and rolling. We found a gym on the second page. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get a round of applause in the chat right now? How do we do that? Last four days, I've done, you know, three hour breakdowns on the sailboat market every day. And it takes me 30 pages to find a decent boat. So bingo, we've got ourselves a unicorn right here. All right, cruising. Tartan, this would make no sense. Again, just compared to the other boat we just saw. This one's a 90. It's 16 years older. What are you buying here? The name? Tartan? Tartans are not amazing vessels. Whoever convinced you that they were, they're not. We got a single helm on this one. We got almost a canoe stern. So getting into and out of your vessel is going to be a nightmare. Um, a lot of dark wood. Very, very narrow. I mean, it, this is just not laying out anywhere near this one. Let's get the wide angle shot here just so we compare. Boom. Nice, wide open, clean, long galley, rah, rah, neither here nor there. And then you got this. It's really a personal preference. You know, there's a big, big difference there on how it's going to make you feel. And it's whatever you like when it comes to that stuff. That's the important thing. But we go here and then we start looking down. You'll be only three owners. Awesome. So you'll be the fourth. So you can track down three previous rabbit holes of mess. Cool. Um, all right. You're telling me no information right now. You're Fail in comparison to the Cyclades listing. All right. And this is all just, you just copy and paste it. Rad. Until we got here. Oh, yeah. So, in my opinion, just based off the listing, you lost a sale right there. Just based off the listing. WS Yacht Brokers. Compared to your competitor, Brewery Yacht Sales, these guys... Brewery Yacht Sales, uh, seriously, round of applause, man. Fairly decent pictures, good detailed listing, uh, a good price point. Thank you. You did a really good job there. WS Yacht Brokers, not so much. It kind of looked like shh comparatively. Uh, but my guess is you're a lazy broker because you're overpricing your vessel. Uh, whatever. Anyway, enough of my ranting. Uh, so this, again, wouldn't make any sense. What are we going for center cockpits for? You're going to live in a marina and somewhere cold. That's cool. Um, then they can absolutely work. Uh, y'all, y'all, we don't buy y'alls. Um, so again, for this price point, you know, these guys are kind of burned right now because that cyclades on there. Um, and this is why it's very, very important. Even once you have your makes and models dialed in on your spreadsheet, the kind of boat you're after, it's always good go ahead and just browse through yacht world sometimes these little gems you never thought of will pop up and that cycle leads 43.4 or whatever that's it um that's clean that's good but this wouldn't make any sense you get a 35 foot boat versus the other one i mean you know here's the other catalina sloop that we had before and you're getting a 31.27 foot boat on the catalina you know, compare that to what you're going to get on the cycle leads for the same price. I mean, it's almost a 10 foot difference in your length at the waterline compared to the Catalina. So why would you do that? Why would you? They're the same price. Single helm versus dual helm. This make no sense, right? So we don't really need to go into a boat that make no darn sense. Not this early in the video. Give us time. We don't buy Pacific dumpsters because why, ladies and gents? Because they're end up in stirs. Um... All right, we got the Oceanus 31. Now, I've been on this boat. I was on this boat last year in Annapolis. I don't recommend ever buying this boat. Um, it's too light. So, in my opinion, it's so light, it's not even good for lake sailing. This thing bounces all over the place just when you're walking around the boat. Um, yeah, don't do it. There's better 30-footers. Now, it's nice because it's modern, yada, yada, yada. Beneteau can't figure out their cockpit for the life of them. Um, and this is just a prime example still, uh, you know, pretty boat and stuff, but really everything on this boat I love except the dual sinks, stupid. And then why is your sink over here on the end? You idiot. Um, but the boat's too light. You know, I'm not like 900 pounds. I'm 195 pounds. And if I step to one side of this boat, the whole thing leans over. It's unbelievably light. Don't get that boat. Not, and I love Beneteau, you know, 
Um, they don't love me as much as I love them. It's a very one-sided relationship with Beneteau. They don't even return my emails, but I still love them. But that boat's a piece of shh. So, cruising. We're bruising. Uh, another Catalina. Absolutely not. You got better boats. I'll unpack it. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Why? Because they make no dang sense. That Cyclades can do everything this boat can do. It's far newer. It's laid out better. Um, you know, it's faster. It's more maneuverable. It's more modern. Everything makes better sense on the Cyclades. I mean, you're get you you know you're talking a boat that's a decade newer. And somebody's gonna say, "Well, those were built better. Prove it." What's that sailing couple that's got a boat that they're refitting for the second time? That absolute trash can of a boat. I forgot what boat it is. You can say the Uma. Everybody says that about that trash can of a boat too. And look at it. The thing's bowing all over the place. It's a train wreck. Um, but this boat, just an old, outdated, modern, you know. Oh, I thought that said 71. Whoa. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah. And then again, not telling us much. You know. 2012 was your sale. That needs to be replaced. Sale's a decade old out the door uh new interior white ultra leatherette in the salon i mean good job on the listing you're doing some good things here you're telling me some things thank you it's just the boat makes no sense comparatively to what else is currently on the market and i was telling you i was in nassau last february two of these island packets were right across from us in the marina every time a boat went by those things he thought they were in a category seven hurricane hurricanes only go up to category five but you know what i'm trying to get at um all right, not making any sense. Uh, we got the Ocean, the Beneteau 343, went over those in yesterday's video. This one's wildly overpriced to what else is on the market, and the Cyclades would make more sense, and it's less. The Cyclades gonna throw this all off. It's such a good deal, it looks like, and again, I don't have anything to do with those brokers or the boat. I don't care if it sinks, if you buy it, I don't care. It makes no difference to me. Um, just currently, what's on the market, that one by far is up and above. <sighs> And we're cruising. What's with the 100K price and all these old dumpsters? The Tayana. Uh-huh. Sure, bud. What are we doing? We canoeing through the Pacific Northwest Passage with this trash can of a stern? These are so stupid. So stupid. Why would anybody ever buy this boat? I mean, I get it back then. Sure. Actually, in 1980, like, that was... No. I wouldn't... No. No. Dumpster. Train wreck. We got the sun on a sea. What's this? A 339i, maybe? Ooh, 36i. The little sister. Went over this yesterday. There's one that's in really, really good shape, I think. And it's much, much better priced. These are great little boats. Good for the solo sailor couple. Nice control panel there. Yeah, your typical Juno. You know. It's got the toe breakers. I don't like them, but it's got them. What is this for? A cat or fruit? What's that for? Can somebody tell me in the comments what's that for? I don't understand what that is. Um... This is where they messed up. Okay, so your stove's right here. This is just general on sailboat stuff. I just happened to notice. Stove's right here. You're cooking bacon, meat, anything like that right here. Um, they, it smokes a lot. And they only give you this little tiny hatch. This entire window here should have been able to been pop out. Um, you know, fold out almost all the way up. Um, with some little struts on the end. It would have made more sense than this stupid thing. Good job, Jano. You sucked at that. Um, and everybody does this. Like, oh, you put your head here. No, you don't. Your head always goes up here. <laughs> I mean, it just happens to be that way. You're tired. You come down from a 12-hour watch. You just flop in here. Poof. You're not taking off all your clothes right here and trying to wiggle in and turn around. I hate that. This is just not how it winds up that you lay. And Janos do a bad a job. Do a bad job is when you walk in the cabins, you shut this door. You have no room right here. I can't stand up and turn around and do anything. Um... And then you can't see it in this photo, but um, the storage comes down. It's a two cabin version. Nice separate walk through shower. Walk. Nice separate stand up shower. I'm an idiot. Can't talk. Um, lose my voice if I keep talking this much. What is this dang thing? But I like the Chinos. But as you can see, even boats that I like, I will shred for stupid things on boats. I don't care if I like them or not. I will absolutely tear boats apart for dumb things. Love Geno, but. They did some stupid things. Um, these crack me up. This little pole here. These poles meant to keep it away. In reality, those poles, uh, they help a little bit, but they're not earth shattering. 
This guy's got it at his own house. Where's he at? Florida? Yep, Florida. Nice. So that'd be a, that'd be an amazing setup. Little 36i, live in Florida. It's at your own dock. Like, come on. Are we living or are we living right now? That's amazing. Catalina 350, been over it. A Catalina 50, shut the f up for a... Oh, it's Portland. Those dudes have lost their mind. Uh, we're not doing that because the Oceanus 50, remember? This one would have made more sense, right? And it's less money. Even this boat's... Oh, no, this boat's a train wreck. Never mind. Wouldn't have made more sense. Forgot that boat had all that damage. Never mind. Scratch that. Ignore that. But we're not doing a 50 from 91 for 110 grand. Stupid. Uh, let me see if I can find the actual length of the waterline, length overall on this boat really quick. We'll compare it to the Cyclades. All right. I found her. Here she is. The 50. Boom. It has a giant... The... the uh, this, this... I mean, don't get me wrong. This looks like a million dollars right now. As much as I trash Catalina's, again, I will give credit where credit is due. And this, to me... This looks amazing. I wish the boat wasn't from 1991. This is awesome. The amount, I mean, this is like a dance floor, dude. At a disco ball, you're rocking here. Uh, it's unfortunate that it's that much money and it's that old. Wow, did they do a good job at the interior or what? Um, so here's a little trick. Now, when you're sitting long term offshore and stuff, you generally don't wind up in a cabin. The reason for that is it's incredibly rough out there most of the time, especially when you're crossing oceans. Um, oftentimes, people will just crash right here. Now, it's nice if the table can help keep you on the couch. <laughs> so that's something to look at when you're out sailboat shopping. If your thought process is if you want to cross oceans and stuff like that, keep in mind at some point you're going to wind up crashing right here. I like the tables that will go flat. And you can make it one giant bed and then add a lee cloth. That's a plus because you're not going to fly out of the thing. If it's like this and it doesn't go flat and turn into one large bed, you want to make sure you've got a way to tuck yourself in there when you're sleeping under passage because you're going to crash there. This one depends on how high above this table is from the couch if you're going to roll under. I'm a pretty big dude. Oftentimes on these, I can just lay on my side and my shoulder will hit the table. The back of my shoulder to keep me from flying out or flying off the couch when I'm sleeping. Um, I never sleep in a cabin. I normally just sleep in the cockpit. I see no reason to sleep in a cabin. I love this. I love, I, I really like this interior. Again, it's too dark, but the, okay, let me scratch that. I love the layout of this interior. This looks great to me, the layout. Uh, looks awesome. But um, uh, didn't tell me anything. Awesome. Thanks. Again, yacht brokers, if you guys are watching, you should be watching because I'm trashing you. Um, you guys need to put more effort into your listing and stop just copy and pasting. Uh, you know, stop copy and pasting just boat data. You know, this boat probably going to need a big, big refit. I don't see anything in here about sales or running rigging or standing rigging or engines or nothing this is a fantastic galley too you can actually tuck yourself in there this one you might be able to do some stuff underway but we still got a stupid double sink useless trash i'd cut that out the second i got on the boat just cut this out boom snip snip add a new sink boom put some trim caulking done take you 10 minutes easy cheesy lemon breezy get rid of that stupid stupid double sink they make no sense um but here we are so we got the 50 so, 44, length of waterline, 14.75, beam. The Cyclades, 42.45, 14. So, they're very, very, very similar in size as far as your livable space goes. But length overall, the Catalina broke that 50-foot mark. So, now you're going to pay for a premium slip. Remember, you've got to keep that in mind. And that's even something you could highlight here on the spreadsheet can add you another section here and you could put a big red star for premium slip or something if the boat happens to go over that 50 foot mark because that's going to be a premium slip that you'll be looking at so fantastic boat very similar in size to the cyclades so we'd obviously go with the cyclades because it's less money obviously and we're back on the hunt the oceanus 393 again 
This wouldn't make any sense with the psych leads on the market. And it's not for sale to U.S. residents while in U.S. waters. What are these guys doing? Smuggling drugs and winding up in ports they shouldn't be in or what? Uh, we're not doing votes from 1976 either. Let's keep on moving. Now, remember what I said earlier. You're going to start to see a lot of the exact same models. They're just going to pop up. They're all going to be varying in prices again. That's a great thing for the spreadsheet. If you've settled on, we'll use a Catalina 350 as an example. If you settle on a Catalina 350, boom, you can put all 10 that you're interested in right here on the spreadsheet. And you can pair every one in every detail and it'll auto populate for you here at the bottom of the spreadsheet. And now you can actually compare the prices. Makes it super, super easy for you. Almost like I've done this before. Uh, we got Hunter 466, 2003, single helm. So in comparison to the Cyclades, single versus dual helm, personal preference. I've gone over, gone over that a bunch, covered it at the beginning of this video. And this price point, it, it really, really matters. And you've got to figure out what you need. And if you've never spent any time on a boat offshore, go get offshore with somebody. You don't have to do an ocean crossing, but go out 100 miles offshore or something uh, and see what you start to think. You know, do a couple days sail up the coast 100 miles offshore. And see what you think of the single versus dual cockpits if you can single versus dual helm is this a yeah no, i'm an idiot okay all right we're moving check out some pictures here the single i hate this bummer so i mean right off the bat it's not it's not nothing nothing here is looking amazing yeah we're just gonna pass this it just you can see just the general overall condition of the boat. Unfortunately, doesn't really hold a candle to uh, that Cyclades as far as condition. Uh, current owner, 2008. So it's had the same owner for a long time. That's nice because when you're buying a boat, if you can make friends with the previous owner, they can kind of give you um, some stuff. So they can you know, kind of walk you through issues as they arise. Now, the mast was pulled in 2023. A new mast step was added. That's good. Uh, rigging was inspecting. So you didn't replace the rigging. You should have. I mean, you were right there. You already had the mast off. You might as well have just replaced it. Would have cost you at that point, since you already had the mast off, your rigging would have only cost like four grand. You might as well have just done it. Um, needs to be serviced. These generators, you get into a rabbit hole uh, if it hasn't already been serviced and taken care of. One thing leads to another. And if the generator's got to get pulled, it's like, five six thousand dollars to do this um you know so by service it just depends on what they mean um rebuilt turbo again nice boat needs a little tlc it doesn't need a little tlc it needs a lot and you're asking too much money all right we are cruising we're cruising we're bruising so continuing our search again we're pretty high up in price here i mean in 1990 not in a million years are we paying a hundred grand for a boat that's 33 years old. Same thing here. Just price wise, that Cycles would be much, much better. The 393 we saw yesterday for much, much, much less money. Now we got a Catalina 380, but again, I mean, these just start to not make sense really, really fast when you've got something like, this is a nice picture, something like that Cycles on the market. Typical Catalina interior, as you'll come to understand the more you look at sailboats, the boats from the same manufacturers tend to start all looking the same. Now, Catalina did this exact exterior on several, the dark wood common. Uh, that's a nice master suite in that one, but not really what we're going for. Because again, this price point, we're going for a big cockpit. Why do we want a big cockpit? Well, I explained it right at the beginning of the video. We want dual helms, not single helms. Hunters, I love, but at this price point for 138, I mean, you got the single helm, walk through transom, swim platform, all of that good stuff, but a fairly small cockpit because she's only a 38 footer. And as we see, the folding helm, just so you can get in and out and around, this is, it's not horrible, but it's not great. This giant step here down the companionway. That's really just kind of a pain. And this particular Hunter, the Hunter 38, looks very similar to a 39i. I would personally probably do the 39i over the Hunter 38. 
So keep that in mind. And especially for this kind of money, we can absolutely get a Geno 39i for that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and skip on those. A Valiant from 1980. We're not buying boats that are 43 years old. Not for $110,000. That's crazy. Uh, maybe it's got a bunch of stuff on it, but still, it'll never, ever make sense for us at that price point. And this arch is stupid. Um, wow, that's really dark. Is that pleather uh, or vinyl? Must be pleather. Yeah, this is just too dark, man. We can't uh, can't do that. And what I say about the... You got a bed here, basically, right by the companionway. Winds up getting really, uh, really wet. And you're losing a ton of space here. You know, you launched out the entire stern of the vessel as far as any kind of space. And this is, uh, this is too close. You're going to come down these stairs. You're going to trip right on this with your hip or your thigh. You're going to go face first right in the salon. We don't want that in our lives. That's bad news bears. Uh, yeah, your standard old vessel. We're not doing it. Not for this kind of money at this price point. Absolutely not. 10356 again would make no sense. We got the Cycles 43.4 at 105 grand. It's a much bigger boat uh and it's newer. So these start to make no sense. Now we got a Beneteau 461. The Cycles once again is going to come in better than this one. And once this thing decides to load, we'll actually take a look at this one so you can kind of see. Here we go. Boom. Now we've got a single helm here. It's not, it's not looking good. Again, the Cycles, it's going to, this one's pretty small. You got this huge, huge swim platform. This is almost like a racing swim platform. Um, a lot of room on it, but you've lost a lot in your interior on the 461. The 461 model, it's just not a model that I am fond of at all. It's kind of a hybrid between a racer and a cruiser. So they tried to get the best out of both worlds. And that never really goes over well in the world of sailing. Once again, you got this dumb little roundabout thing in the cockpit to get around the helm. It's just stupid. Should have just went with a dual helm, opened it up, pulled the interior back. Uh, nothing here. That's a nice master sweep. But again, on 46 foot boats, it's fairly easy to find that. So... Yeah, I mean, nice, clean, all that good stuff. But uh, let's see if they told us any information. Not really. Not much happening there. Our typical pop up. Other details. We got nothing. All right. So when we get into this kind of a price point, we want a broker that has put some effort into their listing. We don't want to pull up a listing and just go, oh, you didn't tell us anything. And now you all of a sudden have to try to track down this broker to find out what in the world is going on with this boat. Is he going to call me back? Is he not? Blah, 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 blah. Now we got a new hunter. Now they were bought by Marlowe. Now they're called Marlowe Hunters. And you're going to find a much squarer stern on these vessels. They still kept things in line with their large interiors, good use of space, things like that. But this is just a 33 footer. Uh, a Beneteau Oceanus 35 would actually be better than this. The 35 has the removable forward bulkhead, so it opens it up. It looks fantastic in there. Not any room here to stand or change or do anything. You're not, you know, it looks like a place to stand up and change and stuff. You're not going to be able to. There's just no room there. So, again, we're going to have to pass, and especially at that price point, that's just, you're getting a little bit crazy on the price point there. It is a newer boat. It's a 2014, but here shortly, I'm going to jump over to a different website. I'm going to show you where the really, really good deals are at. Now, we've got the Catalina 36 MK2. We've gone over these a bunch. They vary wildly in prices. Um, Tax included. That's neither here nor there unless you plan on registering it in New York. The two cabin version, single helm. This is better than the Beneteau's with their little indentation. It's better just to remove it. Actually give you some room there so you're just not tripping all over the place. So Catalina, in that case, did a much, much better job. Um, let's see here. But again, for 112, I'm probably going to go with the Cycleads. We've got the dual helm there. 
This is nice though. And you see how this lays flat, like I was talking about earlier. This is nice because you can just add a lee cloth right here. You can actually do it right from the mast right to the corner here. And that way you're not going to roll off onto the floor. I've been sleeping in cockpits for years. I have hit the floor so many times. I couldn't, I mean, hundreds of times. It's insane how many times I've hit the floor. So here we go. I mean, the interior looks nice. This is nice. It's clean. It's wide open. But for 112K, that's a nice shower too. Um, I mean, it's a wet head. I hate wet heads. Wet heads are the worst, in my opinion, because you go in here and shower and everything's wet. And then you come walking in and your feet are always wet and your shoes are always wet and it molds in there. I just, I don't like wet heads. Not a good look. This looks great though, but this is pretty narrow here. This almost feels like it should have been taken back in line with the companion way right here on the port side. Should have been taken back here. Same thing with the galley. You should have made a better walk through, you know? So right here, about at this cushion line is where this all should have been brought back to and cut over to. So things to consider there. Now I've gone over the 36.2 sailboat data a million times. That's a small boat for that kind of money. Uh, they did make a great use of the interior space on board, but still, you know, pretty small there. Pretty small. The island packets we don't go for. That's just dumb. Uh, Catalina 350, again, too much money for this size of boat. But remember what I said, you're going to start to see a lot of the exact same models. Uh, right around the same price points. Now, the Gemini's I covered yesterday. This is fantastic for a coastal cruiser or island hopper only. Um, you can do a lot of things with these. You can raise this hard top. You can extend it to the back. You can create a really, really nice exterior uh, hangout area. Get rid of this. This is terrible. Um, you know, everybody does this on the Gemini's. They put in these dumb davits and just launch this all. Open up the stern of your vessel. This is looking rough right here. There's actually a conversion kit you can get or do. You can just add an outboard. That's a far more efficient way to go. And then as far as repairs, it's much more easy. It also opens up a lot of storage space on the interior of the vessel once you do that. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do with these. Large deck space, great for the Caribbean, hanging out, things like that. Um, yeah, so there's quite a lot of uh, you know things that you can do there. So yeah, things to consider and really think about. But what I say about anchor lockers, <laughs> this is looking rough. And this is a bit high for the Gemini 105 MC. You can normally find them right around 90 grand. Keep that in mind. Uh, but I do like those for the Caribbean. It'd be perfect uh, in the Caribbean. All right, here we got a, the catches, old boats, island packets again. You're just going to start to see these. A Pacific Seacraft 37. This is legitimately like a 27-foot boat. These are so stupid. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, I can't can't really get behind it there. So there is that. Now, the Hunter 410 was in yesterday's video. Um, if I remember correctly, the 410 from yesterday was pretty hammered. Uh, the 410 is a big 40-footer. It feels huge on board. They're absolutely capable of an Atlantic crossing, things like that. You do have a lot of space. Hunters, they did do the single helms, though, on their larger vessels from back then. And again, with a boat at this 23-year mark, we need to really make sure that she's had a lot of things done to it. Uh, and then again, you would just add it over on our spreadsheet uh, right here. So you could just put it on here and you start comparing it. But so far, the Cyclade is really the only one today that I see that could make a spreadsheet for me personally and what um, what I would be looking for. And I'm not seeing much here. They do tell you some stuff, but not a whole bunch of stuff. Here we go. we got some better stuff. I hate lifeline netting with a passion. It makes your boat look like a trailer on the water. Same thing with the people that hang your clothes on your vessel. It's disgusting. Um... All right, we got, ooh, a new magma grill. Those aren't that expensive. So yeah, I'm not seeing anything here that's really big foundational things. You know, if you look here, you're not seeing anything that's really on my spreadsheet. My spreadsheet, you got the big stuff. Sails, standing rigging, anchors, running rigging, bottom job, dinghy, engine. Then we get down onto autopilot, watermaker, generator, inverter, solar, batteries, AIS, wind vane, bow thruster, radar, anchors, 
those are things you're looking for when it comes to that 20 year mark on boats you're not looking for little tiny things so in my opinion that's just too much money for that especially at that year um you know you can't really do that did i just hit the same page again i did i'm smart like that all right moving to page seven and we're moving up quite high in price the 373 remember the 323, 373, 393. In my opinion, this is a series of Benetos that are all wildly, wildly overpriced. And uh, we're just not going for it. Center cockpit, again, not for this kind of money, especially not from 1997. Another Catalina 50. A lot of Catalina 3 or 350, I mean, a lot of Catalina 350s for sale. It seems to be a bit much. Remember what I said about the Hunters? Now they're Marlow Hunter because Marlow bought them. And this is a great little 33 footer, but for that kind of money, there's some other boats that I would really go after. And we're about to pop over to those here in another page or two. Another 410 sale pending. Clicking on this one. And all we want to see is kind of what they've done here in their information to tell you if they've actually done anything to the boat. This guy actually went through and told you some stuff. I'm not going to read through this because it seems crazy to me. Um, and I'm not seeing like a lot of years here. I'm kind of just seeing a standard cut and paste type of a thing. Not, not that great. Not, you know, when I get into this kind of a budget, I expect more from my brokers. If I'm going to do business now, keep in mind with them, the guy's going to get paid 10% on a listing. Uh, so he's going to make 11 or $12,000 off this boat. And if you can't even do a detailed listing for that kind of commission, then I'd probably don't want to do business with you again we got another hunter 460 it's a new arrival that's very misleading because the boat could have been on the market for weeks uh it's called sly fox very nice interior standard with the uh hunters as usual again hunters make fantastic use of their space but if we're going at this kind of a price this year range i'm looking for details so i can put it on my spread sheet Reduced by 34K. So that's a huge, huge price reduction. Now that would lead me to believe that possibly someone else put in an offer, got a survey done, and then the survey came back with bad news. That's kind of what that would lead me to believe there. Um, but yeah, again, I'm just not, you're not giving me any information here. So if the owner is really in a hurry to sell this boat, uh, if I was the owner, I would get rid of this broker. Get yourself a better broker that's actually going to do the job that needs to be done in order to sell your boat at the correct price. Uh, a lot of these brokers are still holding on to the COVID prices, you know, and they've just got things wildly overpriced, praying, just praying. Um, again, too old, things like that. We're moving, we're shaking, we're baking. Island packets, you're going to see a lot. They're just not worth that money, I am telling you. Absolutely not. Another hunter. Move it up in the year. We got a 2007. No longer drifting. That's kind of a cool name there. I like the two cabin. Again, great use of interior space on hunters. You're always going to find that. But for this kind of money, going with the cyclades. Got a dual helm, uh, things like that. Unless this one was totally outfitted, which judging by the listing, I'm not seeing anything but a copy and paste there. So keep that in mind. Um shaken we're baking here wow 1977 26 footer for 115 grand nah that just to me seems insane you know i mean that just how in the world could you possibly possibly think that, that boat's ever gonna sell for that money i mean it just can't is it stuffed with gold uh, we got the tall rig. I don't go for tall rigs. It just creates another problem in your life when you're trying to do things like the ICW and stuff. Uh, you wind up having a lot of places you can't get under with that. Now, we've got a 2013 to 4 380. Still, I'm going to rip with that Cyclades. Uh, it's a lot less money and as big, if not bigger. But to fours, I do like, especially the brand new one, the to 4 440 or 444, whatever it is. Thought last year at the Annapolis Boat Show looked great. Uh, it was huge for that size of a boat. So we got a nice wide open cockpit here. We got the dual helms. So here we go. We're making some progress here. 
Um, yeah, didn't put a lot of time or effort into your listing. The swim platform's great. See, okay, so we've got some stuff. We've got a new Dodger. Uh, okay, so this guy's done a lot of stuff, and it's a brand new boat-ish. So what's going on? Why all this stuff done? Twenty. The boat's only 2013. So you're either on top of things, which is awesome, or something happened, but you're not telling me much. Let's go on over and pop over to sailboat data. Take a look at this and see what uh, see what's happening. All right, I can't find it on sailboat data, so I guess we're not going to take a look at it. That's unfortunate. If somebody else can find it, let me know. Uh, I'm just kind of an idiot, so I can't find it right now for some reason. So I don't know what's going on there. All right, moving right along now. We got the probably 393 or something here, I'm guessing. 373. Okay. Too much money for this kind of boat. We're not doing it. We've got too many better boats on the market in this price range. So we're not going to backtrack here. That cyclade's still right around 100. Smokes these vessels that we've been looking at. Same thing with the 411. Catalina 350s are a dime a dozen. Why are they a dime a dozen? Because everybody sells them. Um, then we got the 461, again, too old, nice big boat, but too old, single helm. We're just not doing it. We got the 100 420 passage. This is a big boat for a 420, but again, still, that cyclides leads is much, much better. And this is the passage, so it's the center cockpit version. We're not doing that unless we're living in a marina in uh, cold climates, because sailing in a center cockpit's a nightmare. On a 40 ish foot boat now if you can get up in size you need like a 50 55 foot center console sure those can open things up but not 40 foot center consoles we don't do them hunter passage too old hunter 410 we're at the 2002 range these are nice boats for sure um there's also a deck salon version but they're the single helms so for me it wouldn't work but maybe for you it will because that's not a deal breaker for a lot of people uh so what we instantly do just kind of get a general overall feeling again of how does the vessel itself look. Um, she's looking like she's lived in. That's what she looks like. Giant cabins. That's awesome. Huge fan of the big cabins. Always a plus for us long term. And she's a two cabin. Looks fairly clean. One thing you need to pay attention to is how accessible are things. This is really accessible, which is nice. Uh, the other thing, though... Because it's right here, it's going to be loud when you're sleeping. So again, most people aren't sleeping in the cabins when you're underway along passages. Just not comfortable down there. It's in Georgia, so it's an easy jumping off point. Comes to market due to owner's desire to explore different areas of the world. Okay, that makes no sense. Thank you. Uh, all right. Not telling me much here. Boom. No info as usual. Other details. Bingo. Bango. All right. We got some stuff. VHF. Finally, someone replaced it. Uh, depth speed. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. It, you just So you're not telling me like years of anything? That's not really, really helping us. But let's pull up the sailboat data, the 410, just so you can get an idea of the size of how big the hunters really are or can be. And here we are, our favorite website, sailboatdata.com. Now, again, you got to be really, really careful when you're in this range. Okay. So you got almost a 14 foot beam, but remember those breaking points. 40 foot's a breaking point, and so is 50. So when your length at the waterline is not above 40, but you're paying above 40 for a marina, I will usually avoid those even if these two numbers are close. If I'm going to pay for a marina, that premium slip above the 40 foot range, then I'm going to want to go with at least a 41 foot length at the waterline. Now, that's just me personally and my needs on a sailboat. But that makes the most sense, in my opinion. Now, this one, you got a livable space under 40, but you're paying above 40 for that slip. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You know, we're right around five feet in your difference here. But because the five foot difference falls right at that breaking point for length overall, it's a boat that I personally would avoid. Doesn't mean it's a bad boat because the hunters are huge. 51 gallons of fuel, 150 gallon water tank, not going to really need a water maker especially if it's just two people. So keep that in mind with a Hunter 410s. It's at that funny point um, 
you know, where things are a bit iffy there. We're right at that breaking point. We don't want to do that. And we're getting way up in price here too. So again, we're staying away from anything prior to 2000. If you're going to drop 120 grand on a boat, in my opinion, 2003 or newer at this point. Pacific Sea Crafts are trash. I can't say that enough. Trash, trash, trash. So we're not doing those. Look, there's four in a row. Uh, Island Packets, you know, it's just, it's not my style boat. Now this one's a 2001, you know, it's an expensive boat, but this stuff is just all stupid. They're a totally different design of a sailboat. And in my opinion, it, it makes no sense for everybody uh, to do this. So I'm not gonna spend 120 grand on an Island Packet 350. I'm gonna pull up sailboat data and show you exactly why. Right after we get past the dark interior. So the Island Packet 350, again, broker's not telling us anything because they never tell us anything for some stupid reason. Um, all right, so this is just copy and paste, copy and paste, thanks. All right, so you told me nothing. Over to sailboat data, we go. Here we are, the little gem, gem. Uh, this is why we're not doing island packets. This is one of the reasons. She got a small beam, 12 foot, on about 35 foot. We're going for 13 if we can. She got a 29 foot length at the waterline and a 35 foot length overall. So again, that's too big of a discrepancy, first of all. But you've also right in that funny category of where your length overall breaks that breaking point of 30 feet and above. So now you're paying a little bit more than 20 feet to 30 feet. And so you find right in you fall right in that category. So we just we want to stay away from things like that. Uh, this boat's heavy. She's slow. She's a dog. She rolls all over the place. It's insane how much those boats roll. So let's just go ahead. Let's stay away from those. OK, let's let's not get involved with the uh, island packets. Again, single helm Catalinas, we're not doing. Uh, 1990s boats, we're not doing. We've got another Catalina. Now this one's a 2012, so she's newer. They've gotten in line with the newer designs. Uh, so the length of the waterline versus length overall is fairly close, but they stayed with the single helm. Um, you know, I like this interior. It's pretty, you come down, you've got a nice head right there, a cabin. But this is just your standard, you know, 35 foot sailboat. And in my opinion, there's better options. But 35 footer is what you're looking for and you're about this price range. I would go with the Oceanus 35. It has that removable bulkhead that's really going to benefit you long term on a vessel. Now, here's a 2011 34. So as you can see, we've jumped up into the 120 K mark. And what you're starting to see a lot of are 35 foot newer vessels. So. It makes it tricky because you can get one that's a little bit older, not too much older, but you can actually go up quite a bit in size. That Isinglass looks brand new. But again, I got a single helm. If I'm spending 120 grand, I really, really want a dual helm. Uh, and standard, this is just your standard Beneteau interior. Looks the same on a dozen different models of theirs. I love their interior, but it's just a basic sailboat. Nothing fancy here. In my opinion, not worth 120 grand, you know. She's a 2011, so that's a plus, but you can also grab a 2008 or something and save some money there. We're not doing Beneteau first. Why not, ladies and gents? Let me know in the comments, because they're racers. We're not racing. Uh, no 1976s, no Hunter Passages, not in this price range. No 411s, again, no 410s, because you're falling in that funny category. Um, now this is an original owner vessel, so maybe the boat was well, well taken care of, None of this leads me to believe it would. I can tell you right off the bat, you need all new running rigging. It's going to be a few thousand dollars just for running rigging. This boat's a dumpster. You can take one look at this thing. It's a dumpster. Okay. One owner. Yeah. This boat, you just stay away from a boat that sits like this. Uh, this all looks pretty and stuff, but we got some replacement parts here. Somebody was doing something. Let's see. A large space is blah, blah. Copy paste. Thank you. No copy paste, not for me today. Uh, copy paste. Some of it's not, but uh, yep. All right. So you didn't tell me any info on your boat. Again, typical broker nonsense. So you lost another sale. Congratulations. Now we got the 393. Makes no sense at this price point. Single helm, nice boat, capable of anything you want to do. She can take you around the world. She can cross the Atlantic. She can cross oceans. No problem. Uh, but you got the single helm, a little bit smaller cockpit on her. And yeah, so there's just not, uh, 
you know, nothing on these that's going to lead me down the rabbit hole of thinking that this is going to be a good buy. Not at this price point. She has the two cabin, but this is really small uh, with the way that the interior is laid out. So we're just going to go ahead and pass on that. Again, not making a lot of sense for us today. We're shaking, we're baking, we're cruising, we're bruising. We got a 1998 Endeavor catamaran. Awfully boxy. Again, this isn't a sailing catamaran. This is a hangout in the Caribbean catamaran. Uh, a little bit too much money. I would just go with a Gemini 105 MC. If I was thinking this price range for a catamaran, Gemini 105 MC is a better boat. Problem solved there. Now, older hunter. Again, we're staying away from them. Staying away from these older hunters. Hunter. Pacific Dumpster. The 373, the smaller sister to the 393. And what did we learn? There's better boats for less money. Or you could even get a 373 for less money in this price range. So... Stay away from those. Catalinas, we don't do because there's comparable, better boats on the market. Again, it's a newer 34 footer, but it's a 34 footer. It's 2012. I'd go with like a 2008. I'd just still take that Cyclades over any of these so far. The 33 Eyes, fantastic little boat. Coastal Cruiser Island Hopper. Uh, this one I'm assuming is just cruising the lake there in Wisconsin, but that's too much money for that small of a boat uh, and too old. I'm going to spend that kind of money. I'm going to try to get even newer than 2013 if I can. I mean, it's been the same money. Here's a 2014. Uh, I'd do the Oceanus 34 over the 33i for sure. All right. Cranking right along here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Hans Christian, too old, too old. Hans 400E. These are nice. Um, they're really, really square, but they're nice boats. Now, the 400E, look, nice wide open. Everything's square, but everything's nice and wide open. The galley on this is phenomenal. Uh, these black and white. I mean, someone's trying to be like a full-blown photographer here. Now, the problem with this, for this kind of money, it's a single helm. Love the boat. The guy really outdid himself on his photos, but to the point to where it makes things look unrealistic. Um, you know. Now, this was at one point a cabin he's taken out and done some storage. So this just kind of shows you as a good example of how large cabins are on 40 foot boats. If you take out the bed, you can really throw in some shelves, some organization in here and you get yourself a very, very nice locker, um, separate stand up shower. That's always a plus nice master cabin. Things are nice. They're wide open. The only downfall really I see here that's huge is the single helm on the vessel. Let's pop on over to sailboat data. Let's see what she looks like. All right, here she is. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. Like I said, nice two cabin owners version there. That's always a plus, especially on 40 foot and under boats. Just go with a two cabin. Don't get a three cabin because you think someone's going to come and stay. No one's coming to visit. They don't. Everybody's got their own lives. You're hanging out on an island somewhere, drinking Mai Tais, trying to get all your friends to come down. Nobody's coming down because everybody's got a life and they're busy. Now, this is a pretty big discrepancy for a boat this new. You get a 35 foot length waterline, just over 40. Uh, now, this one you can tuck into your normal 40 foot slip, so you're not going to pay a premium. So, you know, four and a half foot difference. Not terrible, not fantastic, but not terrible. Nice beam on her as well. 37 gallon fuel tank, 80 gallon water tank. Bit small on the water tankage there. Unfortunate. Um, again, what did we learn about our cap screen? Doesn't mean anything. Copper ratio doesn't mean anything. So, nice boat. Um, there would have to be a specific reason you chose this Hans because the Cycles is a 2006 and it's a bigger, better boat and it's had a lot more work done to it. So again, we're still kind of stuck in that Cycles is beating them all. This uh, Alon's going to be the same. Hunter's too, uh, small for this price. And yeah, Hunter three by six. There's one yesterday. I think it was like 70 grand. So why would you pay 120 for this one? Trust me. There's nothing about this boat that would make you pay that kind of money, especially with this lame of a broker putting no effort into it. Just copy and paste it. Great work, sir. So we're not doing that one either. 138, again, I like the hunters. They're great bang for the buck, but once you get up into this price, you're just still snagging that single helm. And really, I think you should just do yourself a favor. Get yourself a dual helm uh, when it comes to spending 120 grand makes no sense we're almost up at 125 grand here and we're still some overpriced nonsense here that we 
don't uh, we don't want to take part in those kind of things. So the Hunter 450 Passage, that's a huge boat. Uh, but again, you've got about a 39-foot length of the waterline, I think, if I remember correctly. So you're falling in a funny category. We pass on that. It's too old for that kind of money. 1980s, we're not doing the Bavaria. Again, too old, and that's like a 36-foot boat as far as your livable space. The waterline goes, actually. It's got a pretty narrow beam on the Bavaria 42. Now, we're not doing those. We're going to fall right into a funny category. It's 125 to 140 grand category. It's going to be older boats that are wildly overpriced such as this 1995 Catalina 400, uh, or it's going to be newer boats that are smaller, that are overpriced, like this Hunter. Uh, Tartans we just do not do under any circumstances. There's nothing that that boat adds that would lead you to take the Tartan over a different vessel. Uh, maybe the newer Tartans, but not these older ones. Anything prior to 2015, we're not doing Tartans. Uh, it just It makes no sense whatsoever. So now we're cruising up. We're 15 pages deep here in the uh, Yacht World Adventure, and we're gonna we're gonna bump right into this lull, like I was saying. Old boats, too much money. Um, you know, the four two three is nice. It's the bigger brother to the three nine three, which is the bigger sister to the three seven three. So on. You see what I'm saying? Um, but again, single helm, 2005. We're grabbing the cyclades instead. Uh, older boat. Bigger, Catalina, too much money. Uh, a classic museum piece um, right there that we're not going to do. The 393, that's too much money. Yeah, things are looking rough here. They're looking a bit rough. Pacific dumpsters are all over the place because they're dumpsters, ladies and gents. They're dumpsters, and we're not going to do them. Now, we got a Sun Odyssey, 2011. This one's the one with the crocodile. Bingo, bingo. Uh, 36i, too much money. There's a 39i. You can actually get a 39i for less than this, so there'd be no reason to go with the 36i. Uh, so there is that. J boats, we don't do. Oceanus 31, 2017. Again, for a smaller 30 foot boat, we're not going to do the ocean. Oops, sorry. We're not going to do the Oceanus 31 because it's too light and you can't even walk from one side of the vessel to the other without it rolling all over the place. Stay away from J-Boats. We're not doing that. Another overpriced Catalina. Again, we're not doing 350 Catalinas. They want too much money comparatively to what else is on the market. So we just go ahead and stay away from them. Now we're, we're moving way up in price here. We've got 130 center cockpits. We're not spending 130 on a 21-year-old center cockpit. It's not going to make any sense for you. No 1965s. Uh, X-Yachts are cool, but it's more of a racer. Uh, again, another 393. Remember what I said like an hour ago? You're going to start to see the same models repeated just at different price points, which is why the spreadsheet is so important. Just go over to my website, buy it. It's 10 bucks. Get my book and the spreadsheet. Make your life happy. Call it a day. All right. Now we're going 393. Uh, Hunter. This is a newer Hunter for 130. It says fully updated. So I want to see what you mean by fully updated. So this one's got a lot of stuff. I mean, at least it's looking like that. But I don't see anything fully updated. This is just... Uh, oh, you got a water maker. That's good. Okay. All right. So we got some things updated. Okay. I was wrong. Uh, -bum -bum. Let's go down here and see what else they're offering. 9-8 dinghy. All right. Hard bottom dinghy. What outboard, though? So this is a great example of where you'd use the spreadsheet once again. You would simply uh, just pull up the old spreadsheet again, right here, boom. And then from here, you would just start filling it out. And you'd go down on all that added things, and you'd just add it up. And then right here on the spreadsheet, at the very, very bottom, it'll add it all up for you. It'll auto-populate your prices down here, whichever boats you're looking at. That's why the spreadsheet's so important. Uh, no matter what price point of a vessel you're looking at, that spreadsheet will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. So... It's 139 it's a 2011 but for this money, I'm about two seconds away from showing you a better place to buy boats once you're in this price range. The Hunter Dexalon. Love the 41 Dexalon. My biggest downfall, single helm. But they are fantastic. It'll feel huge. Great for a single sailor or a couple. This is like the perfect size that would work for the solo sailor or a couple. Um... The 41 Dex launch. She only comes in, I think, if I remember correctly, with about a 36-foot length of the waterline, but we'll check that out in a second. 
Again, the cabinet's in a bad spot. I don't like this, but again, I've, I sail in really, really rough seas. So when you're going down the companionway, this tends to be a roadblock. Uh, it's good. It can stop you from flying all the way down the, uh, the interior of the vessel, but you can also trip and smack your face on it. So just little user friendly things that I'm always looking for. A table will go down, create a big bath, throw in a lee cloth. We got no toe kickers, but we got some steps, uh, going down into the suites. So that's, you know, one thing. So yeah, overall looking good. Let's pop on over to sailboat data, see what she looks like. And here we are, the 141 DS. Yep, like I said, right around 36, 40. So this one you could probably sneak into a 40 foot slip. So we're not falling in that funny category. 1325 beam. I mean, it's a Dexalon. It's gonna feel huge. It's a Hunter Dexalon. The only downfall, single helm, but I love this boat. And 130 grand is right about where a 2009 41 Hunter Dexalon should be falling. So that's good. Again, you could plop that right over on your spreadsheet. Boom, now you're comparing things and you're actually making progress towards your dream. Very, very important. A lot of people just hold on to the idea uh, buying a sailboat, but never actually make any progress. This is insane. A 2005 36 for absolutely not. Come on, man. Come on. Not doing that. Uh, again, we're staying away from custom boats, older boats, not doing it. Hunter E36, 2012, 36 boat, boat, boat that Dexalon is going to come better. Uh, this one's newer. She's trying to get more sleek, but again, they stayed with a dual, with a single helm. Unless you're doing a Dexalon, get a dual helm at that price point. Um, the Oceanus 440, fantastic boat for its day. This one reached its uh, lifespan. You got a 30 year old vessel there for 130K. We're not doing that. Uh, insurance becomes an issue after 20 years, depending on your vessel and what kind of sailing that you want to do. A lot of the United States insurance companies are going to try to put a whole bunch of stipulations on you. 30 miles offshore, got to be north of the Tropic of Cancer for hurricane season, all these other nonsense things. We're not doing that. Uh, we stay away from, you know, boats that are just going to create another headache. So I'm going to go with old 30 year old boats. Whole bunch of 393s here, Catalina 387s. None of these are standing out as anything. This is just. You know, again, the same models regurgitated. Now we got a Beneteau Oceanus 37. I like the 37. It's a nice boat, but that's a lot of money for a 37. And I've still only got a single helm. So we're going to just instantly pass on that one. 19 pages deep, ladies and gents. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. Now we got a Hunt Genoa 40.3. Still, the Cyclades is better than everything I've seen so far. You know, we got a newer 34. It's in Washington. They want too much money for it. It's a 2014. Typical 34 foot Beneteau. I love it. Be great for a solo sailor. Uh, this boat should, in my opinion, come in around 120. So they're, you know, 15K over price there. Not awesome. Again, Hans, smaller, single helm, newer. You're going to start to notice that. You're going to go smaller, newer, all of those things. And we got a Beneteau 43, dual helm, swim platform, walk through transom. Nice boat. Love them. Uh, fantastic. A nice arch here, hard top dodger. That'd be perfect. Uh, lots of easy access. I like it when these are wide open. I don't like the walk through transom. I like it when they're just wide open. Um, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to fall out. You're not going to fall out. The only problem here, this is pretty narrow uh, as far as your cockpit goes. I'd probably change this table out for a smaller table, in my opinion, make a lot more sense. Um, so yeah, your typical right around 2010, 43 foot-ish vessel, uh, looking pretty standard. No one's done anything to this, as you can tell here. This is all just your basic stuff here. Not seeing anything. 2022 bottom page. Uh, new sales 2018. That's nice. Again, you could easily, uh, you know, pop that right up on the spreadsheet. You could put it down and then right underneath the sales part, you could add that, you know. Um, now, that's not going to add to your value. So you, should, you could actually subtract from the price there on the spreadsheet, you know, or put yourself a little note. I'm not going to have to buy sales, things like that. That's nice. Beautiful red with yellow sunburst, asymmetrical spinnaker for regattas. I ain't doing regattas, man. Um, so I don't care. Uh, yep, not telling us much. I mean, you can you can actually look up all this because they give you all the makes and model numbers. Look it all up. You can add it up. The spreadsheet, you can put that right under miscellaneous stuff. 
you know, and then go through and add up all the miscellaneous things that you're getting as a benefit, which can sometimes offset that price. So sometimes you'll see a boat that's, let's say, $10,000 more. Let's say all the other Oceanus 43s are, let's say they're all 120 grand. You go through, you add up all the stuff on this one, and you find out, wait a second, this boat should be 150. It's only 134. So I'm going to pay $14,000 additional for this boat, but I'm getting $30,000 worth of stuff might work for you. It's on a case by case basis. So let's pop over and take a look at this one on our favorite website, Sailboat Data. Here we are looking at the 43 on Sailboat Data, two cabin, three cabin version. Now this is back to what I was talking about. Once you've reached that length at the waterline, length overall, when it falls right in the middle of a breaking point, it's kind of a doozy. Uh, now this one makes really good use of space because she does have a 13 and a half foot beam, but you get a length of waterline of only 38.08 feet. So if you look at the cyclades, I'm above the 40 foot length of waterline and I'm only 4350 overall. The cyclades is a better buy. It just, it is what it is. There's no way around it. So again, if you're going to compare apples to apples, we're going with the cyclades, even over the Oceanus there. Uh, it's odd. I know. I like the Hans design here. I like this just wide open. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of it. I would launch this little bench here and I would just do lifelines and I'd sit right here. Um, I like that, especially in the following sea. Dump the cockpit. It all dumps right out. It's great. Love it. A lot of people don't, a lot of people freak out and get scared, but I like it wide open, just like that. Um, I want to feel like I'm standing on the edge of the Empire State Building, coming over a wave, and uh, it's just what I like. So yeah, nothing about this boat that's going to make you choose it over that cycle leads anyway. So now we go newer and smaller, especially when Catalina's sister ship, why are you showing, showing the sister ship to show the boat? Uh, Oceanus 423, single helm, same thing. Hunter Passage 420, too old, especially for 135 grand. A 42 Catalina is like a 36 foot boat, not for 135 grand. We're not going to do that. So let's see here. We got some old boats, another Hans. All right. Not much here. This is not in a million years. Should you ever buy a 393 for 135 grand? Don't do it. Another delusional person. Uh, Wildcat 350, you know, again, the Gemini, if you're going for Catamaran, Coastal Cruiser, hang out in the Caribbean. This is a nice boat. She got a decent BDC, which is Brig Dead, Bridge Deck Clearance here, so she's not going to slap a bunch. Uh, nice boat, 135 grand, but at that price, I'm looking for a Gemini Legacy 37. It's going to be better than this, in my humble opinion. But again, that's just my opinion. So maybe you like this one better. This kind of reminds me of, uh, I don't know what it reminds me of, but I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Yeah, no, we're not going to. We're just going to go ahead and pass on that one. Some more overpriced Pacific dumpsters. We don't do Pacific dumpsters because they're overpriced nonsense. <sighs> the Oceanus 40, it's my old boat. Love this boat. Across the Atlantic four times on an Oceanus 40. Now, dual helm, two cabin, owner's version, what you're going for. Uh, nice swim platform, walk through transom. These should come in at 100 grand, not 140 grand, just so you know. Um, this one looks really nice and clean, but, you know, they're not telling us any information. Um, and then the Oceanus 40 tends to fall into a funny category where the length of the waterline versus length overall is too big of a discrepancy. Uh, even though I used to own the boat. So we'll pop over on sailboat data. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we are. My old lovely vessel. Two cabin owners version is what I had. But 34 length waterline, almost 40. So you're right at that six foot mark. Um, is what it is. 13 foot beam. Fantastic boat. Love this boat. I'd take this boat anywhere in the world in a heartbeat. No problems. Not scared of anything on this boat. I'll take it anywhere you want to go. Um, but unfortunately, this particular one, just a little bit too high. Now, if you fell in love with the Oceanus 40, put it on the spreadsheet that you picked up on my website, 
chasinglatitudes.com for 10 bucks and start comparing it to other vessels and see if it's going to make sense for you. I love the Oceanus 40. That one's just a little bit too high on the asking price there. And that's, we got to stay away from getting burned here. Remember, the Oceanus 43, we're not going for it. We're not doing it. It falls in that funny category, uh, breaking that 40 foot mark. And it's just too big of a discrepancy to fall into that category. So we're not doing it. The 139, nice boat, too much money, single helm. Things starting to make sense for you guys, kind of making it easier. Oh, we got a dual helm. Oops, I was wrong. Dual helm on the 139. Okay, not bad. But for 140K, we're going with the Cyclades. That's nice to see a 139 dual helm. I didn't know that the uh, 2011 139 had the dual helm. I'm stupid. I should have known that. I didn't know that. My bad. My sincere apologies. So we're going to take a look at this one on saleable data and check some things out because I was uh, wrong. Hold on a sec. Let's pop over there. Here we are looking at the little gem. The little gem. Three cabins too much on a boat of this size. Go for the two. 35 length waterline, 39 and a half overall. Five foot difference there. Not bad. 13 foot beam. Yep. We're going for the Cyclades. Cyclades is going to be bigger, less money. Um, yeah, let's do the Cyclades. Flare Pacific Dumpster. Not having it. 27 foot day sealer, Corsair. Not doing trimarans, remember? Uh, that's wildly overpriced for Catalina. We're cruising. Benito first, the racer. Formosa. This is, uh, isn't this, this is the Captain Ron boat, isn't it? Formosa 52, I think, was the Captain Ron boat. If I remember correctly, the 423, the bigger brother to the 393. <sighs> Yeah. What don't we like about this? Anybody remember? Single helm. For that kind of money, don't get a single helm. You're just doing yourself an absolute injustice there. Now, we've gone all the way up to 140K. 393. Look at that. Wildly, wildly overpriced there. Uh, let's go to page 23. Pacific dumpster, dumpster. I don't pack it. No, we don't do those. Remember? Remember what? Tartans. We're not doing small tartans. Not for 150K. Uh, we got Oceanus 50. The 50 I love. Nice boat. 140K in Virginia. Don't know anything about this boat. Might be an absolute dumpster. But she's the Oceanus 50. Uh, second year into making this boat, because I believe the Oceanus 50 came out in 2010. Huge boat. These often come with four cabins. You can convert the forward cabin to one cabin, make it a large master suite. Convert one of your aft cabins to an office or something, and boom. Get yourself a giant boat. This is a good price for this boat if it's in good shape and good condition. Not telling us much about anything here. Standard. Standard oper operating procedure for brokers. Yeah, not seeing anything here. Thanks for nothing. Let's pop over to sailboat data. We'll take a look at a couple of things and show you what she's actually looking like. Now, remember, when you're looking up the 50s, there's a Beneteau 50 and an Oceanus 50. The Beneteau 50 is the prior model. Um, four cabins. Remember, just remove this forward bulkhead, make it a large master suite, launch one of these aft cabins, make it an office or something or a pantry, and boom. I got a giant boat. Things are looking good. This is beautiful. So we're under the 50-foot mark overall. 43 and a half, basically 49 and a half. A little bit of a big discrepancy there, but the beam at almost 15 feet can kind of make up for it on this boat. Like I said, first built 2010. Keep that in mind. There's the Beneteau 50, which is this one. First built 1995, last built 1994. So remember when you're looking, it's not a Beneteau 50. This one is an Oceanus 50. It can get very, very confusing when you're going through that. That's a fantastic boat. If your boat's 140K, you want a boat I would snag this Beneteau 50 over any of the boats between the last, whatever it's been, 18 pages until the Cyclades. So my only two boats today that would really make it on the spreadsheet, the Cyclades 43.3, the Oceanus 50. There'd be some things to consider there. Number one being the $35,000 price difference. <laughs> so we got some things to think about now. Okay, we're cruising. Hunter Passage, again, we're not doing that. Falls in that funny category. Not doing 73 boats, not doing 60 boats. 141, we're not doing that because at this price point, look at what you can get. A dual helm 50. We're going with a 50 far before we're going with a 41 on the Hunter. If my budget's this much, 
if I was going to go with a 41 foot, I'd just grab the Cycles. It's a heck of a lot less money. What's the Cycles going for? 105k? Save yourself 35 grand. You're welcome. Tips appreciated. Don't forget to super chat. Super chats in the in the comments right now. What we're doing this premiere really, really help out the video. Even after the video, you guys know you can super chat and say thanks. That's awesome. Really great way to help me keep the channel alive and keep banging out videos. Um, all right, we got a Sun Odyssey. Let's see what size this is. The 43DS. Now this would be comparable to the Hunter Dexalon. So if Dexalons were your jam, then these are the two that you would compare. Again, on the spreadsheet, that uh, 41DS versus the Genot 43DS. The Genot tends to have a little bit higher coach roof. Things sit up a bit higher, so you can kind of look out and get a 360-degree view while standing inside, whereas the Hunter Dexalon tends to sit a little bit lower. They were both going for the same thing, but those are some little user-friendly things you're going to kind of notice on the boats uh, if you're going to compare these two models to each other. Now, they're both great little Dexalons, and Dexalons are always more expensive. This one looks fantastic so far. Large Master Suite, yada, yada, yada. They did these little indentations here so you could stand and change and actually have some room. That is why that's there. Now, 43 Dexalon, let's see if they told us anything. This is right at that year where she should have had a nice refit. So something should have been done here. Privately owned yacht, never been charter service in the islands, only sailed seasonally, waterway friendly, both in drought. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, I don't need a background on Juno. Uh, they actually tell you some standing headroom, six feet, two inches to six foot, 11 inches. I have a guy on my members area, he's like seven foot something. It's insane. I don't know how people are getting so tall and how I got burned with the six foot stick and uh, didn't make it to the six six. Uh, yeah, okay. It's nice because you got the 56 horsepower. That's good. Now, this guy's telling you some stuff, but a lot of it's just basic. Here we go. We got some things. Uh, 2017 goes through a whole list of stuff that they did. Awesome. I'm not seeing standing rigging yet. New through holes, eight horsepower. Why didn't you go with the 15? Uh, Nine point, okay. Mast restepped and sealed, engine serviced, replaced cutlass bearing. Okay. So what I don't see here is the standing rigging. So if you were interested in this boat, you'd have to get a separate rigging survey. And you'd want to talk with an insurance company first to see if they're going to require you to replace it because it is 22 years old original standing rigging. Now, let's go take a look at the sailboat data on this boat because I love this boat. Uh, let me check one more thing here. Cruise right through here. You know, I don't know why they didn't do a dual helm on these darn things. All right, one second. Let's go over to sailboat data. Here we are. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. All right. So again, falls in that funny category. It's at the breaking point length overall while being length waterline under. But it is a deck salon and she does have almost a 14 foot beam. So it's absolutely worth looking at if that's what you're going for. 53 gallon fuel tank, water tank 145. Again, probably won't need a water maker. Uh, where's our dumb numbers? Right here. Those numbers don't mean anything. Keep that in mind. So in my opinion, absolutely. If you're looking for a deck salon, it's 100% one to consider there. Uh, and as I said, taller coach roof, things like that. 24 pages deep here. 423, not doing better boats out there. We got another deck salon. Same one we can look at again. You start adding those on the spreadsheet. And you can just start comparing them and see which one makes more sense. Hunter Passage makes no sense compared to the deck salons. And then the Oceanus 50 is also in this category. So now we've gotten some pretty amazing boats in this price range. Yes, we've moved way up in price, but we got some pretty good looking boats now. Uh, let's see here. Pacific Dumpsters, Fountain Peugeot, 140K. That's not bad for a catamaran. If you're going for a catamaran, again, island hopping, coastal cruising on catamarans of this size. Um, the Fountain Peugeot, it can sail. Uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be going, doing crazy things with it, but it can get you. Definitely go all the way up and down the East Coast of the United States, West Coast, could go through the Panama Canal, ABC Islands, Caribbean, Grenada, Bahamas, New York, Maine, Boston. This boat will get you all over the place. Um, she is a bit older, so again, 1996, but you do get catamaran things to consider. Now, if you were looking at Dexalons, those the Hunter Dexalon, the Genoa Dexalon, 
Catamaran falls right in line with the price. So you'd really have to look at them based on what type of sailing are you going to be doing? Are you really going to cross the Atlantic? Because if so, then grab the Genoa Dexalon or the Hunter Dexalon or the Oceanus 50. Are you just going to probably cruise the islands, hang out, drink Mai Tais, pina coladas, enjoy your life? Then probably maybe the Catamaran might actually be a better thing for you because they're really comfortable especially when it comes to the tropics. This one's looking a bit rough, and that's kind of what I would assume from a boat of this age, being a catabrat. Now, based on the year, the year, I would assume that someone has hopefully done a bunch of work to it. They should have, but it doesn't, he's not telling me anything. So again, lame ass broker, not telling me any information, but just things to consider, trying to throw things out there for you guys. But, you know, you really do have a lot of options once you get up here in price and you got to be very, very thorough, which is why the spreadsheet really, really helps. Keep that in mind. Um, the Hans 315, very, very similar to the Oceanus 31, too small of a boat, too light, too rolly, and not for that kind of money. Again, when I'm looking at boats, I'm thinking full time, live aboard, cruising, living in the islands or crossing the Atlantic, hanging out in Greece, south of France, things like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. Um, you know, again, you get up here in this 140 K mark, I'd be doing a Gemini legacy for catamarans, not a proud, and I really wouldn't do the fountain of show either at that price range. Um, we got a Oceanus 37 again, nice boat, but single helm and we could do a 50 for this price. A little bit older on the 50, we could do the Cyclades, a little bit older than the Cyclades, but we got a lot of options here, so you'd really have to consider why would you be doing this one over those ones? Really, really things to take into account. All right, we're moving right along. Now, at this price point, this 140, 150 grand, there's really another option that I don't think enough of you are taking advantage of, and we're gonna go take a look at that right now. So here's something I don't think enough people take advantage of. Now, these are X charters. And oftentimes people talk about X charters as if it's somehow a bad thing. Now, the reality is when it comes to an X charter sailboat, this whole company, this is a moorings website, moorings yacht brokerage website. Now their whole entire company is based around letting people rent sailboats and not sink and keep them safe. So at minimum with an X charter boat, you know that you have a vessel that during its lifetime, in the charter fleet was well kept because it had to be they had to keep people alive if not they instantly go out of business now oftentimes yes there's absolute train wrecks on an x charter this is a perfect example this is a 40 or thirty thousand dollar beneteau 50. it needs a hundred thousand dollars worth of work now you'd wind up spending a hundred and thirty thousand dollars on this boat just to get it into shape. Now we just looked at an Oceanus 50 that's already ready to go for the same money. So you would just buy that one, not this one and save yourself all of that time and effort. Um, you know, if you want to talk about stupid things that stupid people do, you can look at Expedition Evans. They bought a 50 for a hundred grand, put another hundred grand into it before they could even sail those morons. Um, you can just buy the 50 ready to go for 130 grand 100 grand it makes much much more sense now a lot of these here's a lot of these do have down here at the bottom it'll tell you the vessel sustained some hurricane damage in irma now that is something to take into serious consideration now you need to figure out what kind of damage it was moorings will send you an entire spreadsheet and tell you exactly what the damage was and exactly what was repaired now if you buy an x hurricane damage charter you need to be very, very specific with your surveyor and have the surveyor go over in depth all of that damage to make sure that it was all properly repaired. I'm not recommending or saying that you should buy an X hurricane damage, but sometimes you can find a gem in the rough. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to try to find a boat here on their website. Okay, so this is a perfect example. Now, this is a Genoa Sun Odyssey 349. I love the 349 when it comes to 35 foot boats. This is by far my favorite. Now this one's listed for 104,000. 
Just your basic 35-foot sailboat. It was not damaged in Hurricane Irma. It's just now coming out of the fleet It this month. Uh, today's the 26th, so it's just now coming out in October. Now, what moorings and most ex-charter ex -charter boats will happen, they'll go through what they call a phase-out. So the moorings are going to come in. They're going to repair any damage, any cosmetic issues, any electrical issues. Anything on the boat is going to be 100% fixed, replaced, or repaired, and she's going to be ready to roll turnkey the second you pick this bad boy up. Now, the reason I'm showing you guys this is a boat like this, you get a clean slate, a boat with a solid foundation that has had all of its maintenance throughout the life of the vessel, 100% turnkey, ready to pick up and go tomorrow. Now, the 349 you can get for 104000 right here on the Moorings website. So we're going to pop over to Yacht World. And we're going to see what a 349 goes for from a private seller. And then we're going to discuss the pros and cons of both. So here we are. Now, you can get another X Charter over there. Uh, the boat we were just looking at on Moorings. It's, uh, it's over there in Greece, unfortunately. So bad example, I fail. So these are X Charters. Here's the one in Greece. So you can pick them up for 105K all day long X chartered boat. Now, if we cruise down and we get out of the X charters, we, let's see here. So here's one in North Carolina, probably not an X charter, or it's, I'm assuming it's not an X charter, um, but it's $130,000. So right there, right off the clip, you save yourself $25,000. We're not talking peanuts here. That's a lot of money. Now, does this one offer any benefits over the X Charter? No, it doesn't. It's just a privately owned vessel, and it's probably in worse shape than the X Charter because owners don't know how to take care of their sailboats. It's just an absolute fact. They have no idea what they're doing. Most things get neglected. Uh, this boat's looking exactly like that. This is all dirty and moldy, and you know we're just not looking hot here. And uh, yeah, so that's just one example. But let's go back over to moorings. Let's see if we can find a better example with a bigger price discrepancy. Now, here's one. And let's do this next one over here, this side of the pond. Now, here's one in Tortola. Uh, OK, so we're, that's got some hurricane damage. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it. I'm just saying for the purposes of what I'm going to compare, we're going to find one that's not hurricane damaged. Um, so the Oceana is 41, 2016. Usually, remember, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Maria, 2016. So all those X charters are probably going to have, if they fall in that year range, they're probably going to have um, hurricane damage. Now here's 2018. This one shouldn't have it. Nope, doesn't have it. Okay, so we have the 2018 389 Sun Odyssey. Fantastic boat. Perfect. Dual helm, wide open transom, lovely. Love everything about this boat. Love the 389 the bigger brother to the 349. Huge fan of this boat. Absolutely love it. So let's run over. We'll pull this up. Now, this is 115K. It's located in the British Virgin Islands and is a 2018. Now, remember, 2019, 20, and 21, we had a ton of travel restrictions. This boat is probably barely used. In reality, it was probably in charter for maybe two years because of all those travel restrictions. So over to Yacht World, we're going to go. Let's look at a 389. Okay, here we are. Now these are X charters, Sunsail, Moorings. They're always doing the X charters. 139K. So, you know, they're, uh, this one's 115. So even for X charters, uh, this one is quite a bit less than the other X charter 349s on the market. So this could be an absolute screaming deal right here so these are x charters okay x charter x charter okay so now these are over in europe remember this one's over here so here's the first one you're going to find on this side of the pond is a 2019 so we've gone up only one year so it's one year newer but it's a hundred and seventy thousand dollars this is a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars it's $55,000 less than this boat. Now, I don't care what this boat has. You can re you can get everything this boat may or may not have Whoops, uh, with that $50,000 savings or whatever it was. 
So there's no reason to buy a privately owned vessel for that much more money. I mean, it's $55,000 more, give or take. And what are you getting? Nothing other than to say that the boat was privately owned. That's all that you're getting. This boat doesn't have like a thousand amp hour battery of lithium bank or anything like that. And it's $55,000 more. Neither of them have hurricane damage. They're both the 389. So this is an absurd savings that you're getting by doing the X charter. And again, 2018, all those travel restrictions barely used, but that's just the icing on the cake. Now we're going to keep on going. So we've done the 389. Let's jump up to a little bit bigger boat, shall we? Uh, and again, we're going to go with something newer so that we don't have any hurricane damage. So we got another 389 there. Uh, we have a 419. So we'll do a 419. This one's in St. Lucia. No hurricane damage because it's 2018. The big hurricanes were 2017. All right. So here we are. 149 grand. Over to Yacht World, we're going to compare to a Sun Odyssey 419 privately owned. Okay. Here we are. So... 149 grand for that one, 2018. These are X charters. Here's one for 129. That's probably a better deal, but that's 2017, so it might have hurricane damage. Remember, we got to go 2018 or newer uh, to make sure we don't got any hurricane damage. Now, there's the boat itself. Okay, so now we're going to compare it to a privately owned one. These are all X charters. X charters, and again, we got to get on this side of the pond. So there's nothing on this side. So here's the closest one. This is the Dominican Republic, this side of the pond. Uh, and this one is $230,000. Dominican Republic, right around the corner from me. $230,000, $149,000. So you're all, you're literally, I mean, the price difference is absolutely huge. You're talking an $80,000 price difference. $80,000. You can buy another boat for $80,000. Um, you know, and this one's even a year older. <laughs> so you get a year newer and you save $80,000 by going with an X charter. I have nothing to do with moorings or any of these X charter companies. I don't care if you buy from them or not. As a matter of fact, some of the people that work for moorings drive me bonkers and they're absolutely nuts and I can't stand them. Um, but when it comes to saving, and getting the best bang for your buck, an X charter, once you've reached that 130,000, you know, hundred it's actually right above a hundred thousand. Once you're up around that price point, you've got to really consider the X charters. That's an $80,000 savings. The first one was a $50,000 savings. And now if we go up in size, the savings is going to be even bigger as we go. Now we've done a 3349, a 389. Uh, let's see here. This one was just reduced to $34,000. That seems insane to me. 2017 probably has hurricane damage. Going to double check. Yep, there it is because of the year. 2017, not saying don't buy it, just saying for the purposes of this video, we're not going to take a look at it. Let's go up in size here. Let's get another, let's get a big one. Let's see what we got. We need a big boat, big boat, big boat. Okay. Oceanus. Okay, that's 2017. That probably had a hurricane damage, did it? Let's see. It did. Okay. No. Uh. Okay. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. Need to get up here in boat size. Um, dun, dun, dun. All right. Nope. Not, uh, finding what I'm looking for. It's a 50, that's a $54,000 price reduction. I mean, you want to talk about price reductions? Look at these. Their new fleet is coming in. The only reason these giant price drops are happening is because their new fleet's coming in and they got to make room. So we got a $14,000 price reduction, 54,000, 44,000, 60,000. I'm telling you right now, an X charter is 100% the way to go right now in today's used market. Now here's a 519 2017. Uh, yep. So, so I need to find a 2018 year and bigger, but it keeps burning me. Let's see if I can do, uh, let's see, year high to low. Okay. All right. We're going to go down a little bit because that got a bit crazy. Um, okay. So I got a Geno Sun Odyssey 519 2018. So I'm going to use this as an example. 519, 269K. Go over to Yacht World. Take a look. Now, 
this one's a 2018 519. The closest thing you can get to that as far as year is a 2019 for 337 grand and it's on the other side of the pond. Insane. Here's an older one, 2016 for 315 grand. This one's 270. You know, and you're saving $45,000. The price savings when it comes to these X charters right now, it's the best deal on the market hands down 100%. There's just no other way around it. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Here's an Oceanus 41 for 145K. We're going to go over. We're going to take a look at that one, too. So the Oceanus 41, 2018. So here it is on Yacht World, 145K. Now, the next one that's even on this side of the pond is going to be one in California that's older, 2014, for 214 grand. $70,000 savings and it's four years older. So you get four years newer and you save 70 grand. It's, I mean, it's just, this is a no brainer, an absolute no brainer, ladies and gents. Do an X charter. I mean, here's one in South Carolina for 230 grand and it's four years older. 230 grand. You're almost a hundred thousand dollars savings. It's absolutely insane. It's crazy. Get yourself an X charter if that's the kind of budget that you're looking at. Uh, again, today, once we got up there above that, about $110,000, do yourself a favor. At least give yourself the time and the effort to go and look at the X charter boats. You can just do a 2018 if you're leery about hurricane damage. Uh, I'm not leery about it, but if you are, that's fine. I understand. Now, you can just grab a 2018. You're going to save somewhere between forty dollars to $140,000 on the boat, depending on what price point you're at. And these have huge price drops because they've got to get rid of them right now to get into uh, their new fleet of boats. I mean, reduce 54, reduce 59, reduce... I mean, it's insane the kind of money you can save here. So keep that in mind. Now, if you did like the video, Super Chats are greatly greatly appreciated during the video or even after you can super chat down in the comments it's an awesome way to support the creator that's what makes the channel go around my patrons only ten dollars a month head on over there sign up come over to my members area hang out chat it's only ten dollars a month uh, and it really really helps me keep making these videos leave a comment down below thumbs up like the video subscribe turn on those notifications and i'll catch you guys on the next video thank you so so much